Welcome, everyone. It is the spring 2023 anime season. We've been watching a lot of anime. <laughs> so Slowly oh. regaining sight in my left eye. Mm -hmm. you know, just... Exactly. Um, so we're here to talk about several dozen anime series uh, this season that we've been spending the weekend watching. As usual, no second, third, fourth seasons, no sequels, no uh, directly like young children-oriented shows. Uh, and no H, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no um, adult-oriented <laughs> shows in that respect. No. <laughs> totally. Uh, also, no OVAs, no movies, just TV yeah. series. Uh, and so let's just get into it. We've got, we'll start off with um, Alice Gear Aegis Expansion. This is based on a mobile game, and boy, is that obvious. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, it's, I mean, cute girls, sci-fi, space things, although that doesn't really come into the first episode. Um, they're all basically licensed I, I, actresses, licensed actresses mm -hmm. who then go out into space and fight aliens in, yeah. in outfits. Um, <laughs> I was mentioning games. as we were watching it, this very much felt like mobile game made a boatload of money. And so they just said, here fans, here's an anime series. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like we've talked about this like a thousand times before where it's like we watch this and we're like, it just doesn't, it feels fan servicey, not necessarily yeah. in that respect, but yeah. just that it's your fan base receiving that which they desire. And the rest of us are just kind of going, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just, hey, look, well, I mean, it's animated. Neat. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> like we, we saw the first sequence and we're like going, okay, this, this kind of looks like a fight. Okay. And they're doing their thing. And I was just like, okay, great. And then suddenly we're back on earth and it's just basically this one girl who wants to be an actress, read pilot. And her, the entire episode is her dealing with the girls and trying to get mm -hmm. there. And it's just all cutesy and, and, and servicey and a whole bunch of weird things go on that you're kind of like, why are we doing that? Yeah. <laughs> why are we blowing into a donut? Mm -hmm. Why does that plug just look not right? <laughs> yeah, it's odd. Yeah. Um, and and I but, think we all can certainly appreciate yeah. the the excitement when we know that there's a Genshin Impact anime coming. Oh, right, right. right. Undoubtedly, this was that. Was, oh that, my well, gosh, my favorite yeah. game. We're getting an exactly. anime. Exactly. So, yeah. so yeah. I'm sure that those who will, when the you know Genshin Impact anime comes out, there will be certain mm -hmm. elements of it that there, there yeah. will be other people doing review going. It's animated. I just not really sure. About it. <laughs> <laughs> like, and we're going to be like, oh, squee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, it's it, but this is the new class of kind of anime that's coming in where yeah. it's just like you have to True. be in on the joke mm -hmm. to, to, yeah. to get it. So for those of you who enjoy the game, I am sure you will love this anime. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly. Um, and it's got a good budget. Characters are cute. Like, you know, nothing against any of that. Right. Um, moving on to the Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure. Um, and I am honestly um, trying to remember this one. Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, premise is that a uh, Japanese teenager is killed by a thug, uh, reincarnates into a sort of a fantasy world as a young boy. Um, and he... Uh, receives uh, a task from the gods, power from the gods, um, uh, powerful blessings from them. Uh, it's it's hard to say because episode one is very much set up. Yeah. Um, you know, Isekai yeah. happens, I'm this young kid, I'm getting used to my new family and all that. It is nice that he has a very loving family. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's the third son, I think this is the one. Yeah, he's the yes. third yeah. son. So he, you know, but, but he's still, you know, very much cared for by his, his father. Um, and his mother and all that. Third son, noble family. He can't inherit. Mm -hmm. so, like but, he, 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 but he, but he's not ostracized. Like we've seen yeah, once right, where yeah. it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you're not important to the family. Get out. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, no. Yeah, they like, like, like him and like spend time with him. Yeah. Well, they're very <laughs> concerned about him when he isekais into the new body. And yeah, the kid, they're they're even though it's funny, it's just <laughs> everybody's concerned. They're like, mm -hmm. oh my god, you went to sleep and you never woke up for like mm -hmm. five days. What the heck? Mm -hmm. And so it, it is it gives a different vibe. And one of the things that, that I want to mention about this one is that I think this is the first one that we started seeing a new trope for Isekai on how you Isekai, which is a person 
who instead of ignoring the situation says, uh, I guess I'm the guy who's going to have to man up here and do the thing. And yeah. that's how they die. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's not just an accidental thing. It's something like he's actually being rewarded. I don't know yeah. if that's the right term. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rewarded for, you know, doing something selfish and just, you know, making sure these people are okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So and I, and, yeah, I really like that idea that, that yeah. the, you know, um, Exactly. There, there's, it's, a, it's a reward for a good deed to get into a new world and a new body and all that stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, not like some of the ones we've seen where it's like, oh, God says, oops, my bad. I made a mistake. Yeah. We weren't supposed to have yeah. died. Um, yeah. Eminence in Shadow from, from last season where it's like mm. he's doing all kinds of things. He's doing the right thing by mm. defending people and like taking out the bad guys. And then I don't know why they got him hit by a truck. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It was not relevant to like he didn't mm -hmm. do a good deed and then the truck mm -hmm. hit him. Yeah. Like pushing the little right. girl out of the way of the truck mm -hmm. and gets hit. It's yeah. like, nope, just mm -hmm. it was a random like plot device death. Yeah. <laughs> I got him easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was a joke. Yeah. Um moving on to Blue Orchestra. So uh, music drama. Uh yep. I think music dramatic comedy, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. young man who um, has a rather complicated traumatic experience with the violin growing up, uh, we'll just put it that way. And um, then he meets a girl uh, in from his school who is trying to learn the violin and is not very good at it yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. So they get thrown together and um, wackiness and adolescent growth clearly is going to ensue. Yeah, um, there's there, there's nothing really offensive about this. It's not yeah. bad. It's just it's just you know you you go through this. What was it? Ten minutes of this is why my life sucks, mm -hmm. and then then you get onto the get onto the story, and you're yeah. just like, okay, you know, it's it's the event that makes the protagonist go, I will never do this again. Mm -hmm. Oh, hearken back to my previous love of this thing, <laughs> and yeah. then where you start off the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I like the presentation from, from at least because we've seen other traumatic music mm -hmm. related issues. Yeah. Um, your line, April, certainly. Oh, it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that this one deals with the his familial um, mm -hmm. issues in a way that I thought was was interesting. It was yeah. an interesting yeah. approach. Mm -hmm. Um you know, again, your line, April. You see, not great family relations, like mm. wicked ass, terrible family relations. Mm. In this one, it's like, okay, it's a, it's there's there's broken relations, mm -hmm. yeah. but they are not catastrophically devastating. True. That right. the person is immobilized and incapable and just mm -hmm. super structurally damaged. Yeah, you know? yeah. It should also be pointed out that the. Um, um, his relationship with his father is it's very much like tiger woods and his dad right yeah. it, it's that like super intense training with a a parent that the kid is like not miserable in the kid is like you know really enjoying you know learning that to that degree uh but then things you know go south in, in, at one point so you right. know it's not star of the giants right yeah, right, like, right. Yeah. we're just like abusive 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 right um also Holy crud! The opening sequence with him playing the violin. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was yes. incredibly yeah. well animated. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, who knows? Uh, I mean, I'm on. I, I've loved more music related animes in the last five yeah. years than I ever thought in my whole damn life. I would yeah. like. Um, yeah. You know, whether it's about Kotos, whether it's about playing the piano, whether it's about mm. you know shamisen, whatever. Yeah. So it's like I'm really on the fence with this because it's like mm -hmm. it doesn't strike me, but I like the position that they're taking yeah. with the characters, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, it's got me kind of curious, and that's yeah. you know what I mean. It's like okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, to your point, um, Steve, like there's nothing offensive about it. It's very competently done. It's yeah. just yeah, you know, um, it probably won't blow you away, which is fine. Uh, moving on to the Cafe Terrace and its goddesses, our <laughs> straight-up harem of the season. Yes. Our quintessential queens of Cafe Goddesses. 
totally. Um, so a young man uh, comes back to his grandmother's cafe yes. yep. that is failing, uh, discovers there are five girls in various states of undress in the house, because of course, because it's anime. Naturally. Um, and turns out they're all kind of living there and working there as members of the cafe. Uh, of course, he doesn't want, he's going to tear it all down. Um, but of course he doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's going to be, you know, him and five wacky girls all living under the same roof, trying to make the, the cafe work. Um, I will say dressed more often. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to say yeah. dress. Oh, oh. Um, pretty etchy. Um, yes. Very much in the vein of all the classic hair of anime of the past. Love Hina, Aoyori, Aoshi, Tenchi, all those. Um, I I certainly enjoyed it for that. Like, if you're familiar with all the harem tropes, yeah. I think it definitely yeah. executes in all those. And as it, we had said, it does not pretend to not be mm -hmm. right, right. You know, it is it is blatantly honest about what the hell it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. okay, and, and Brent, you pointed that out where you were like, mm -hmm. you know, I can respect that. I can yeah. respect the fact that it's not trying to do anything tricky. It is mm -hmm. exactly what you get. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, with, with what we're, and with what we've been getting over the past few years, it's just been kind of nice to have a, we're not going to make you think about this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to throw this harem anime at you. There's a plot, there's a point, and here's the cute girls, here's the guy, and here's what we think is the girl who's going to be the love interest. Here's mm -hmm. your Ryoko, you know, and, you know, <laughs> here's, yep. you know, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm always Team Ryoko, but anyway, um, <laughs> and but and and it's got it's got all and it hits all the right boxes and like you know like you two said it's just not there's there's nothing there there's no real like okay twist that you have to figure out and everyone's mm -hmm. introduced at the same time yeah. we got the idea it's done now we can go yeah. on with the story. And I should point out something I really do appreciate they did is that the main character is not wishy washy harem anime protagonist. Kid. Right. Yeah. You know, no, he, he is not. He, he's he's very dedicated to what he wants to do. When the girls try to come on to him, he's like, no, I'm just not yeah. going to do that. Like, stop. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he's very self possessed in a, in a way that is uncommon in harem protagonists. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. true. That's kind of funny because it's like he he definitely has backbone when presented mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. and, and albeit he does sort of run away. What are you doing? You're half dressed. <laughs> so it's like yes, you have those moments, but mm -hmm. yes, he, he his reaction to things is not to just fold like a house of cards yeah. when they're trying to be tricky. So it's mm -hmm. like okay, good, nice little yeah. backbone on that. Thank you, I appreciate exactly. that. Um. Uh, all right, moving on to the dangers in my heart, uh, oh my which. God. Yeah. Boy. Wow. <laughs> um, when so serial they, killers fall, when when prototype serial killers fall in love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so main character is a very depressed young man um, who fantasizes about young man. Yes. Um, and basically, but it's okay because he knows it though. Right. Exactly. Yes. He, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so he's fantasizing about killing. <laughs> um so yeah so he's fantasizing about killing his 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 classmates and says no 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 can't do that no 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 gotta get, 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 get stop um and then he meets a uh rather oddball female classmate in the library um who we described she was what was she a cross between comey and someone else um oh god um um uh oh, crap just it's just Think like brainless anime girl kind of trope. Yeah. Um, God, yeah, it was Comey and who else? Oh, gosh, that, that's annoying me now. But yeah, so um, wackiness and zoos, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And clearly he's not going to kill everyone. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I, and this is not to be to be in favor of, you know, being super sensitive about things. Hmm. But I, I'm really surprised that this would touch on the hmm. idea of a young man having homicidal thoughts. Yeah. You know, it's like, wow, that's that's an yeah. oddly very touchy sensitive subject, subject yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. have in the primary market that you're you're putting this into is right. one where everybody should get along, that mm -hmm. you should not have these kinds of 
things that play mm-hmm. out into like your active mind mm-hmm. and yeah. that you should you know you're you're trying to get along everybody wants to get along in peaceful the, the, society it's like the, yeah. the yeah well, the big problem with this is that you know as he, it's he's not just simply stating it mm-hmm. he's fantasizing about it and he, we yeah. actually get an image mm-hmm. of the girl in this in this mm-hmm. picture dead in mm-hmm. a in a posed way yeah, and that's all I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, hold on, <laughs> yeah. Satoshi Kon didn't go that far. <laughs> yep. So, but then you know, it turns out that and and the girl and the reason why he has such detest for this girl mm-hmm. is because she's tall and pretty she's a magazine model and she's every popular and he just wants to straight up murder her with a box cutter Mm -hmm. and he's and did you notice the book that he's reading the whole time human anatomy yeah Mm -hmm. you know and then and then of course then wackiness ensues and it just turns into this (laughs) weird like they help each other out and things and then he starts you know stopping such a sociopath and he actually has a little bit of feelings that's coming in and just screwing it screwing him up and yeah. you know you're just kind of like by the end of it i was like so thoroughly confused i'm like wait oh my god are you know, and then the, this thought just happened to my head what if they both decide to be like bonnie and claude and they yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, uh, i mean they're just helping each other out oh my yeah god. they feed off each other's madness, <laughs> madness. yeah, yeah. I, I i don't think so no, and, no, yeah, because she's she's more Mahoshi than anything else. Yeah, but. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but it's I mean it's just such an interesting take. And mind you, we've seen the, you know any given yeah, season yeah. where there's yeah. all kinds of gun violence and just shootouts right. and all kinds of shonen y shonen that does the shonen thing. But it's like there, there's there's moments where it's like I never expect the these things like this show where you like are presenting homicidal uh, ideations mm. and. You're doing it in somebody who's a high school student versus like a yakuza guy. Right, yeah, right. Like, really. you know, I'm yeah, gonna right. murder my competition. Mm-hmm. It's like I can't think the last time I saw one that was quite like this. Like agreed. That. Like, hmm. and let and us it, not forget, and let, let's not forget the use of the magazine. True. Which yeah. I have mm-hmm. not seen outside of a more mm. mature and for adult anime mm. kind of yeah thing. Not other than hey what's under your bed Billy? Bad. like okay yeah we got that yeah. joke but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. pretty rare um and in fairness on the homicidal thing like how many anime have you seen about people having suicidal thoughts yes right so maybe it's time has come you know yeah um, such a young protagonist yeah. could well and to your point about having a that, that being your protagonist having those yeah. thoughts it's not you know the the weird villain of the week or whatever yeah yeah so well, what do you consider yuna gasai from uh, future diary uh well yes, yeah homicidal yeah. thoughts true, yeah, yeah all the time That's but true. she's like actively super crazy so mm-hmm. he's not he's not outwardly super crazy he's just gloomy boy who doesn't yes. really interact with people so true uh, yeah. all right um moving on to dead mount death play wow this was an anime that goes hard um um it the cold open is a fight between a legendary hero and a necromantic um yes power um and i gotta say that is some of my favorite animation like of the year (laughs) that opening credit sequence pretty damn good we were all oh. just like we were just glued <laughs> yeah, yeah. Glued it was a that. damn impressive fight <laughs> and and particularly because it is one guy versus skeleton monster basically that's hard to make look interesting yeah fundamentally yeah. and they yeah. they found ways yeah um so that was really cool and then um it's a guy happens um and <laughs> let's just say uh the character gets isekai into a very unfortunate situation <laughs> um where yeah. everything is falling apart and they have to deal with that um and uh yeah i i, I won't go any further than that in terms of, of the, yeah there's there's that. a big ass spoiler in that yeah there's there's yeah. Some, some other fun stuff in there 
It, it, but I will say it, this is definitely worth a watch. And it's mm. going to be interesting. And like we're saying, for the animation alone, yeah, you're going to be like, yeah, wow. Definitely for older audiences, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's there's mm-hmm. blood, there's you know, attempted killing, there's all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like there's there is body there's horror, stuff. I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah actually, yeah. Um, so be aware of that. But overall, the tone feels. Um, it doesn't feel gory for its own sake. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, We're not popping eyeballs out because, oh, his eyeball got popped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drink. All right. You know, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's relevant yeah. to the uh, mm-hmm. to the plot line. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think as we, just, mm-hmm. and we discussed about this too, it's like this is an interesting, um, I don't think it reveals anything. It's an interesting sort of anti hero. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Where like the devil is a part timer is a funny take on an anti-hero right and this isn't funny (laughs) so (laughs) no Mm -hmm. but it is it is a very interesting look at like an anti-hero kind of situation it's like okay i I can't think of any ones that we've reviewed in the last several seasons Mm. that have true this kind of intensity where you've got good fight mechanics good uh presentation that the overall Mm -hmm. plot seems to be interesting uh the money put towards it is appropriate you know the budgeting mm-hmm. is good, and that it's it genuinely is like wow. Okay, I you got me wanted to follow where this is gonna go. Mm-hmm. Eighteen plus, have at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, moving on to a galaxy next door, which Steve and I have not seen, but John, you have. So take it away. Yes. Well, as I say, this one is uh, mangaka. He is trying to provide for his family he's trying to like keep doing the thing he um is watching his younger siblings because his parents passed Mm. so his plans for other lines of work kind of hadn't worked out Mm -hmm. but he was good at doing manga drawing so Mm -hmm. it's like he Ah, sort of look you know kind of did one of those well i gotta do something i'm good at this i'll just go with that yeah so he is rushed he has to do the thing he keeps losing assistance Mm. and this mysterious woman shows up Mm. who knows all of his work intimately and Mm. can reproduce everything in detail backgrounds pen and ink coloring the whole Mm. damn thing to help him get his manuscripts put together and she is this unusual blessing if you will for Mm. him to get his manga done and it's like it's it's very interesting because there's some interesting elements dropped at the end of the first episode mm. that gives you cause to pause. Because for a moment, it's like, why is this girl who is distinctly morning dressed, like she mm. looks very upper crust. She looks, she you know, you yeah. see her on a boat with a parasol coming oh, from her right, home yeah. island where it's like, wow, yeah. why would she be so fixated on this one manga ka mm. that she would want to come all this way to be his assistant Mm. and then you get this little like excuse me what did you just say Mm. (laughs) and the first episode ends okay and it's like it's cool his younger brother and younger sister they're cute they're precocious Mm. as like young kids would be Mm -hmm. it's an interesting idea of like him stepping into the place you know in loca parentis his parents aren't there so he has to be now the adult Mm -hmm. he even though he could just work at the kamini you know, mm-hmm. he can try and get yeah. some kind of menial job. It's like he's still able to mm-hmm. do a some do something he's good at and that he likes. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's this very interesting take on this and yeah. this twist. It's like I did not. Okay, I thought this was going to be something <laughs> really kind of like Kagushi Goto, mm. where the dad's a mangaka and he doesn't want mm-hmm. people to know he's a mangaka, ah, so he pretends to be yeah. a businessman so he can shield his daughter from that. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I've seen that kind of thing, and that's just wacky, silly, funny. But there's this is an interesting, like, mm. odd person shows up, and there's this odd thing about them. Let's yeah. See that, let's see how that rolls out. Mm-hmm. So, cool, cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, cool. Well, we get to move on now, thankfully, <clears throat> to Steve's favorite anime of the season, Tosochu: The Great Mission. It's the best thing. Ever. <laughs> Why, well, yes, I would like that <sighs> that plug money right here. Right here. <laughs> Thank right. you, Netflix. Um, 
So, boy, I could not figure out this show. Um, Sci-fi, precocious teenage boy whose name is Tom Sawyer um, is uh, living in this sort of Fifth Element style sort of sci-fi future. And um, then there's this thing called the Great Mission, which is this great race um, Mm -hmm. that that you you get to go on. But it's it's basically tag. Um, And they have businessmen in suits who are also androids who run around trying to tag the different people who are in Sounds like a certain character from a certain movie that I once saw with Keanu Reeves in it. Doesn't mean about Yeah, I don't know what Um, that possibly could have been. No. Uh, And so, and and this is widely televised and everyone loves it and you get a bunch of money for it and which he's going to use for his sick younger brother who's constantly coughing. Um, you can't do it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there's blood. <laughs> well, also the the in this sort of function of a running man anime. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it was very interesting. The sort of uh, layered society in which they live. Where yeah, the mm-hmm. gray people mm-hmm. live at the bottom of this metropolis community thing. Say. oh on the moon yeah. on the moon <laughs> yeah. by the way on the, on the moon true yes. um yeah and, that and he can win that... moon dollars yeah. <laughs> yeah. and that the people that live at the top of the uh of the social and structural mm-hmm. climb are the white people yeah mm-hmm. and it's like oh these are uncomfortable references <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way the, the, this is animated by the same people who um do the art for otakon yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding yeah, but yeah. that's what it feels like it that's does it feels like. The, yeah the the animation is not um great which it's, is weird because it's, it's toy it's toy animation yeah yeah um which i mean it totally rough. explains the bright colors and mm-hmm. jazzy outfits I, and yeah stuff. you know i i bet i bet there was the probably Digimon a low level here which you would yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like there was like some low level toy executive or not executive but like middle manager who like mm-hmm. went through the accounts and go oh there's a uh, hundred thousand yen right here mm-hmm. nobody wants it <laughs> i'll make an anime here we go <laughs> well we know now why this was made Yes, because we it, do. Because it turns out um, Great Mission is also known as uh, Run for Your Money. Yes. Which is a, a real live action, like survival style TV show where they get folks together to run around a like an abandoned amusement park while business, black business suited hunters. guys, hunters, hunters. Go running after them you. like agents from the matrix it's really now weird. now if you if you think you all think that this sounds like wow much it, it must be better than the anime it sounds like it well it is <laughs> <laughs> so check out fuji tv for run for the money yeah um yeah. it is also on netflix for some reason um, um tar- who do you think the target market other than people who watch the live action show it feels like it skews young very just young, the, yeah, the, very young. You know, just the whole design scheme is like uh, it feels like Digimon audience. It, it feels like this is pitched to all of the kids of the parents who watch Run for Your Money, who see it, see their kids, yeah. they, see, they see their parents watching it. They're like, oh, but I just don't want to sit there for an hour watching people run around. But ooh, sci-fi. Yeah. Ooh, bright colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, I could easily I could see that the parents are watching on one TV, the kids are watching. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute, hold on. Um, so yeah, not my favorite anime of the season. No, so, that was a hot drop for me. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Heavenly Delusion, on the other hand, it might be. Oh, yeah. Um, so it starts in a facility with a bunch of uniformed children, which is always a Always had flags. flags. <laughs> um, Tomorrow, all the promised around. Neverland, Darling mm-hmm. and the Franks. It always starts out fine with kids in a facility. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so all of our alarm bells were going off, uh, and then we jumped to the post-apocalypse. Uh, post-apocalypse. Yeah. It's like good, right? Um, and basically, it is these two characters. One is one of the kids from this facility, um, like young teenager. Uh, uh, he says he thinks he's 15, I think, at the yeah. point of the episode. And then this slightly older girl who is his bodyguard taking him think through. She, doesn't she say she's like, I'm like 17 or 18, 20 or 20, something? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and it's certainly aimed at an older audience. There's some pretty um, in-your-face violence in it. Yeah. Um, there's some. Uh, there are monsters, uh, yeah. and they, they deserve that name. Um, yeah. So be ready for that. But it is. It has this very interesting kind of mature, sophisticated tone to it of just these two teenagers wandering around this environment, like trying to get from one spot to the next where like the comedy and the drama is very much situational. It's very much in the writing. It's right. not goofy comedy setups. Right. Um, it reminds me of some of the, like those, you know, those top notch more adult oriented anime of the past. Um, it just really pulled me in. Yeah, it, it's, you know, when, like you said, the alarm bells went off when you see all these kids in these, like, really, honestly, dippy-looking uniforms. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they're in dippy uniforms and they don't seem to care or notice, that's when you go, oh, 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 something's mm -hmm. going on here. And that, you know, everything is regimented to the point when there's this test that comes up. Mm -hmm. Right? And everyone's just like, wait, there can't be a test. What do you mean there's a test? Why, why is there a test? I don't understand. Why are we doing this? And then, you know, of course, there's certain messaging that happens during the test mm -hmm. um, for some of the students, not all the students. And, you know, so you get this idea that these kids are going through the motions of being taught things but it's not really the education is not really important mm -hmm. and we don't know where the soil link green moment is going to come yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah and you know and then it just jumps mm -hmm. to the one of the former students and the bodyguard and they're going through tokyo right mm. yep. and mm -hmm. you know and it's and one of the very things that that grabbed one of the things that that were at least grabbed me was that as they're going through this basically deserted wasteland yeah and everything is on the cusp of falling apart, but not mm -hmm. just yet. Yeah, so though, right. so they're they're going through things and they're seeing things of what it used to be like, mm -hmm. and they're trying and they're actually it's kind of weird. It's like it's like if we walked into just found a house that was built in 1840 out in the mm -hmm. middle of the woods and nobody knows anything about it. And you walk in there yeah. and there's just enough stuff in there that you can go. I wonder what the people were like who lived here. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely get that kind of nostalgia as, as they're moving through. And it's just we pointed out, like this is not a depopulated wasteland. Like they come across people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of the population yeah. is not densely packed like it has no. been, right? Mm -hmm. Most evident. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, like they... with the facility which we know from other other shows of facilities where you mm -hmm. have an outside and an inside, mm -hmm. you know that there's a reason why there's an inside. Yep. And mm -hmm. right. I, I mean, it, collective experience, and it's not a spoiler because we don't know because yeah. this is episode one. Yeah. Not a spoiler. Mm -hmm. But I think the collective experience is those on the inside of the facility, generally things aren't going to go well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like right, yeah. something bad's going to happen somewhere in this. I get that would to go make, to heaven. Yeah. Which well, would make being outside a, a reasonable mm -hmm. alternative because you escape whatever dire fate is going to await you inside. So, yeah. It should, it should also be pointed out. Um, the character we meet on the inside and the character we meet on the outside who look the same have different names. Yep. Yes. So, you know, cloning, who knows, right? What's, what's going on right. there? Um, you know, uh, is it an ocular situation? No idea. Yeah. Um, but definitely, but I, I'm curious to know. I'm curious to yeah. know. Because oh, if, and, for nothing else, then why is the outside like why the outside is? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? What, what happened? happened? Because when they're mm -hmm. going into... The two that you know are road travelers. They're doing mm -hmm. what what you would expect. They're foraging right. as they go. Mm -hmm. They've got to eat, so they've got to find things that they can they can eat, which mm -hmm. means going through houses, looking for canned goods, looking yep. for anything that's edible. And the houses are in a state of disrepair, but it's not so far beyond. It's not yeah. thirty years that the mm -hmm. nature has returned to this. It feels kind of like it's somewhere within the last five years. Uh, the uh, Wikipedia says it's 15, 15, yeah, it's been fifteen years. 
50 years. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's like, is, it yeah. felt like it was a, sh- a longer really period of time, but still short enough that mm-hmm. you had right. integrity yeah. of the buildings and the structure. Which is the else. same age as one of the protagonists. Oh. Oh. And one of them is looking for two people, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Answers mm. might be had. Answers might be had. Very interesting. And um, if not this season, this certainly will be answered in season two. Yes. Four or three. Um, production IG handling this one, and you can tell. Yep. Mm. Um, all right, moving on to Hell's Paradise, Jigoku Raku. Um, man, if you're going to set up a sort of a, a shonen anime with a lot of different characters in it, one of my favorite ways of doing that is to focus on one character for the first episode really dive into that character, make you care about that character, and then go on from there. Um, and that's exactly what they do here. Uh, the main character is a uh, has uh, the ability to essentially make himself invulnerable. Yes. Um, in, in sort of Edo era Japan, and there's this whole thing going on around where he they're trying to execute him, and he keeps um, resisting that, even though he appears to have nothing left going for him and is ready to die, but he just kind of keeps reflexively preventing himself from dying. And so the episode is sort of exploring why that might be with the character there. And then you learn kind of the <clears throat> the premise of the series is the whole thing that he has that they're he's being asked to go do, basically. Yes. Yeah. Um high budget. It's really neat seeing a samurai anime. Yeah, uh, we don't get that many of those, and uh, there's just just enough supernatural elements to kind of add a, a punch to that. Um, and yeah, it's definitely it's definitely shonen, but it's kind of that that more high budget, slightly higher concept yeah. shonen. I'd say it. Well, yeah, I mean it, it. It starts off with the main character is actually a shinobi ninja. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the and they go through the all these different ways of execution, and there's the the samurai girl who mm-hmm. is recording, literally yeah. recording all of this and interviewing yeah. him, mm-hmm. and she's she gets she gets his number by the end of it. Yep, and you know, and um, but you know, again to the point where he's he's, he's just like I have no attachments, I don't care, and then they try to kill him, and he just resists. And he mm-hmm. he himself is even like going, why am I doing this? I'm ready to die. I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm ready to die. So why is this why is this happening? And the girl points this out, and he's starting you know to give him doubt, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And it's just the animation for this is just very nice. It's mm-hmm. you know it's it's not it's not like the other one where it's just like we're like oh my god, yeah. but yeah. it's just it's just competent. It's good. It's mm-hmm. you know it's it's it. The, well, actually, the fight scene in in the dungeon yeah was actually was, re- was... really very good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, actually, <laughs> very impressive. Uh, um, and so it's kind of hard to talk about it because there's that one element that you don't want to say because it gets, yeah. because, because it's like yeah. the last 25% of the episode mm-hmm. and, and that gives you the motivation for the rest of the series. Yeah. So it, it's, I think what we're trying, what I'm trying to say here is that for an, you know, all first episodes are building you up, setting you up to do the thing. Mm-hmm. This did it in a really, really, really good fat, a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a super show and fan as we know, but I, enjoyed the ride of that first episode because it was engaging and interesting yeah. yeah you know it's like you you don't know what other things are surrounding all this you don't know really sort of why he's in this or how he's doing what he's doing mm-hmm. right but it's like you know as you go through this process of recording what's happening and it teases out these elements that you're like you you it's not like pulling hair but mm. the process <laughs> it, it is it is portrayed in a process wherein the recorder is drawing forth from him those mm. little tendrils <clears throat> that help her by the time we get to the end of episode one where she makes connections. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because the way the way that that's presented is like, yeah, that's that's a good interrogation technique. Mm-hmm. You're not just asking a flat question where somebody just is like, well, that's the answer. Mm-hmm. It's like, right. no, yeah. you're you're approaching from different angles you're you're touching on different things oh you're telling mm-hmm. me that this is what you want yeah well why don't you tell me some more about this mm-hmm. other thing why don't, we, why don't we talk a little bit about this 
it reminds me a bit of Rashomon, yeah. where you're exploring, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, through this, kind of right, interrogation. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like that's nice to see that you don't get a lot of that in in an anime, mm -hmm. where it's like you tease these things kind of out that you're like, wow, okay, there's he's got things going on. It's yeah. interesting that he's he's facing up to things through this interrogation, mm -hmm. even though we're talking about an execution. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like wow, you know, having that moment of like self awareness when it's like your life is on the line and it's not mm -hmm. in combat; it's literally a yeah. a tribunal kind of yeah. thing where it's like yeah, yeah. It's interesting so yeah I, i'm very but, curious to see where it's gonna go yeah by the way good call out on the rashomon i didn't even think about that mm. that, that was awesome mm. yeah <laughs> um all right moving on to uh a show where the title we thought we knew we were getting into but it was not um i got a cheat <laughs> skill in another world <laughs> and became unrivaled in the real world too um boy an, an anime about Fat shaming yeah. and bullying. Um, main character is a uh, not having a great life. Um, uh, bullied, overweight, bullied for being overweight, all that kind of stuff. And um, uncomfortable family situation, like yeah, surprising, yeah. really bad <clears throat> family situation. Yeah. And um, he's actually the eldest son. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Full disclosure, I thought they laid on, laid, on, uh, laid on a little thick in the, you know, first half or so of the episode. But uh, basically, he discovers a portal to another world um, in the back of his house and um, ends up in a fantasy world. And the idea is, you know, you are so always so absurdly overpowered in a fantasy world that that then lets you, um, because it's a, it's a two-way portal, yeah. he can then make use of that in the real world. And kind of go back yeah. and forth and and uh have a better life in the real world uh not quite sure why he wants to go back right, to the real yeah, world yeah but, yeah uh, to, okay. still yeah. hoping it's for for comeuppance for the bullies mm, yes really hoping uh, it is. so you know to say and, and yes it was at, at a certain point you're just like please stop hitting me with the two by four yeah please Please, I get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and when we when we're saying fat shaming, we're we're not saying that lightly. No, yes, yeah, yeah. this is this is something that, that that yeah, and the the bullying is real, and this kid's life is crap. Mm -hmm. And the one shining thing he has in his life, his grandpa died, <laughs> and because his grandpa actually <laughs> gave him some useful yeah. life advice, mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, and and um, you know, so he. You know, goes through it. Um, I don't think this is a spoiler, but the grandfather leaves everything to him, yeah, which causes the family who didn't like him anyway mm -hmm. to just further further say, "Okay, f you, I'm out." Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, you know, you know, in, in that and, rare moment, it's his blood family. Yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, he's not that, adopted. Like, yeah, he's yeah. not a burden. This is he's not, not a, one of these things yeah. where it's like, "Well, we took you in when your parents died, and you should mm -hmm. be, you know, grateful to us." It's like. No, these people who treat him like crap at home mm -hmm. are his yeah. birth parents and his his siblings. siblings. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just like you don't yeah. get that to you, you get that in the fantasy land where you then mm -hmm. go and discover yeah. that you're magical and something mm -hmm. else happens and you become great and embarrass yeah. them. But it's like, but for the portal, yeah, it, there was nothing coming to stop the crap he was getting at home and nothing coming to stop the crap he was getting at school. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just like wow, I don't think I see that kind of like domestic kind of ew in yeah. like this yeah. kind of uh, mainstream, not movie kind of thing, not an OVA kind yeah. of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. And so when he finds the portal, which I think we all agree was nice that it was just a door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. It is. That's Makes it. things no, convenient. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no special powers, no activation needed required. Mm -hmm. You just go. I'm gonna go over here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and just go through the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you go through the door, and then of course it's it's like your typical anime where someone goes into the magical world, they have the appraisal and the blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. he finds he's overpowered and all that stuff. Um and then he comes back and things change. <laughs> yes. A lot. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll leave that leave leave that 
that little yes. niblet mm-hmm. alone. But yeah. Yes. It's, exactly. it's, it's a change. It is mm-hmm. a, definitely a change. Yeah. Um, not the only anime that surprised us uh, this season, though. Let's talk about Insomniacs After School. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because the cover of that is, you know, boy and a girl, teenage boy and a girl walking in the, at night. And I'm like, okay, clearly, like, they, they, they're insomniacs, <laughs> and so they meet up and go walking. Fine. It's, well, you know, great, as I told I you guys, I, that, yeah. I, that's why I didn't watch it. Mm-hmm. I'm like yeah. you know, trying to like the few things that I could watch before we before we had our our watch time is like mm-hmm. I get a couple things out of the way and I saw the cover yeah. of it. I'm like, read a little bit on my anime list and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll just I'll I'll save that for the watch. It doesn't seem like that's going to be all that interesting. Well, <laughs> it's in my face red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this this thing uh, touches for me personally. Like like mm-hmm. I was telling you guys as as we were watching, I'm just looking like. Yeah, this kind of touches on a lot of stuff in my life because I I don't sleep either. I sleep mm-hmm. like maybe four hours a night, and mm-hmm. that's why like at you know four a.m. I'm still playing on Genshin, <laughs> you know, because I'm not an addict. No, I'm playing no. on Insomnia. Yeah. No, um, but you know, as as I was trying to explain, as they they go through the scenes of of the two of them doing this, uh, mm-hmm. going out at night, and because they're dealing with their insomnia and, and dealing with what's going on with that. And I was just like, well, no, it is magical because things look differently. Because mm-hmm. I used to do that. I used to sneak out when I was a kid mm-hmm. and go, you know, out in the neighborhood and stuff where nobody's out in the world feels like it's mm-hmm. your own. Mm-hmm. And things are calm wow. and things are, you know, easy and yeah. just, you know, very, very calm and relaxing. And there is an element of beauty at night when you look up and you happen to be in a place that is not a city. And you can see the stars or yeah. you see the moon and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so when we were going through that particular scene, I'm just like going, oh, yes, I remember that. Can I do that tonight, please? You know? It's also the, the and, element of the anonymity of the night. It, right, yeah. Where you're yeah, not yeah. a high school student. You're not, even though right. that, that, yeah. that is an yeah. issue that does occur at a point there. But um, yeah. in general, you're, you know, to borrow from the cheat skill, you're not fat, mm-hmm. you're not tall, you're not short. You're yeah. not smart. You're not dumb. Mm-hmm. The anonymity of the night. Everything's dark. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that allows you to escape the shell that you're in and to embrace what's out there in a wholly yeah. new kind of way. And it's like, mm-hmm. I really got that sense out of this. I'm like, yeah, wow. <laughs> and, and that's just one part of this episode. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. there's a lot of other stuff that we were just like, oh, yeah. oh, OK. Yeah. Nothing mystical. There's no magic here. There's no mm. demons. They're not on a quest. Nothing like that. Literally, the dude can't sleep. Yeah, but that's <laughs> literally that's literally it. And you think, how can you make an anime out of it? Well, there you go. And mm-hmm. then the asteroid hit. What? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, no, that is a joke. Um, yeah, for me, this one was all about the presentation. You know, they they took the, the, this premise, which could have felt very like you say, very simplistic, very cheap. It could have just not been interesting. And it's just how they pace it, yep. how they show you the characters, how they reveal the elements of the story, how the characters come in. One of the things I love is how the girl walks when they're out, kind of her stride, the way she's yes. kind of you know striding down the street. This is all the personality they put into each of the characters. Yeah. Even the fact that even just by the end of this episode, um, now that he's getting a little more sleep, he's much less irritable than yeah. at the beginning. There's all these different things that they're starting to to uh, pull together. Um, and that's episode one. That's episode one, yeah. And, and, and we haven't even hey. talked about the observatory. We haven't yeah. even talked about nope. the couple tender moments and, mm-hmm. you know, the heartbeat where you're just like, yeah, the heartbeat part mm-hmm. where we were all just like, huh. Oh. <laughs> exactly. oh that's so cool. oh yeah. yeah it's it's done with a deft hand and i i don't know yeah. who, i don't know i don't know the origin of this whether it was light novel whether it was manga where yeah. it came from yeah. but somebody had a very deft hand at crafting this in a way that is touching yeah mm-hmm. absolutely um it is based on a manga by the way yeah. um 12 volumes so far still oh, ongoing wow. Okay. Nice. So we're not going to get any answers this season, but you never yeah. know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a second season. We'll see how this yeah. develops. But it definitely looks like it's exactly. going to be an interesting character development. So, yeah, this is this is definitely one of the two winners for me for this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Moving on to a show that maybe not as much of a winner, but definitely was kind of intriguing. Uh, Kamikatsu, working for God in a godless yeah. world. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which begins with the son of a cult leader getting thrown into the ocean and drowning. Uh, so, yay. Um, end of story. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, but uh so he reincarnates into a fantasy world with no magic no gods no nothing um, and as himself and as himself yeah yep, absolutely yeah you know uh, actually that's a really good point i forgot yeah, that yeah. entirely <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> he is him <laughs> they never even noticed that damn <laughs> um so yes that is a thing and um and then actually we only talk about everything that happens in episode one um okay i'm gonna <laughs> um um, I'm actually going to use the anime planet description of this. because I think it does a good job of kind of threading the needle of explaining some of the things. Okay. Um, after he gets sacrificed, he gets reincarnated into another world where religion doesn't exist and adult books are akin to a child's doodles. Accurate. Yes. Um, he finds it's also a world where your life and death is decided by the country. While obstructing his friend's execution, both of them lose their lives. But just at that moment, the god of his religion comes to their world and revives them. Of course, she is also a naked lowly. <laughs> yeah. That's a good synopsis. Yeah, that, that really, that's, 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 that, basically, yes, that's episode yes. one. Yeah, one. That's <laughs> episode one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's very comedic. It, I, I would say mm -hmm. it's mostly comedy. There are some dark twists here and there, but they get kind of... Um, it's it's evened out with, with the yeah. with the anime no Nahida showing up and <laughs> and saving the day, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it, it does start off with, with a hilarious premise where the his father is is there with his followers and he's like in the living Buddha basket thing, you know, just <laughs> totally immobile and he's just like, I guess this is happening. Mm -hmm. guess, yeah, <laughs> this is the thing, this is what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of all the comedies this season, I think this is one of the ones that um, worked better for me. Um, you know, yeah. th th there are a lot of like really dumb comedies, which, yeah, whatever. Um, but this one, I, I think, kind of threaded that needle. Yeah. Well, I, I, the lolly god who just shows up to save the day is so, silly to me. But yeah. I love the idea that somebody's tackled an idea. True. Right. Yeah. Of a non-religious, non-magical world. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, we've had you know into the into another world with my farming skill. Mm -hmm. We've had you know into another world with my amazing cooking skill, mm -hmm. and it's like into another world with no magic mm -hmm. and no concept of like gods and religion. Well, and our protagonist Kuhn does not get that <laughs> right away. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that is one of the interesting things. There's a, there's a line near the end where it seems like his uh his view is that this country's way of doing things is basically like a cult yeah and so he's like well fight fire with fire kind of yeah and so he is willing to bring you know religion to this society if it means upending this sort of bad cult yeah so the idea that he's going to not just go to a world with no religion but like bring religion to a world yeah that's definitely yeah. new and that's I mean, I can't think of any other anime that there's been something like that where. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, to be clear, I, it's I, not. I it's not. It's not like he's bringing a god to bring to fight another god. No. Yeah. He's bringing the whole. Here's <laughs> yeah. belief. Here's, here's God. Here's all this <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't think of too many. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. somebody who wants to become the demon lord, or somebody wants to sure. become you know the hero. It's like they gotta get people behind them and stuff. It's like. Mm. I can't think of too many where it's like, I'm going to show up and like create a God that people will follow. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've already um, seen through to episode two. So I know kind of where okay. it's going and it's okay. like, okay, I see how you're doing this. Okay. I see how he's, how he's kind of crafting these ideas and how things are going to work. Okay. So yeah. it's like, okay, I'm interested. I, I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to watch where, how they're going to do this because it's a sensitive issue that you know mm. when you start messing around with religion and stuff. So it'll yep. see how, the, how they how they walk that minefield. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, a show that John probably will not be keeping up with uh, is uh, Kazuna no Alel. 
Why um, not? This was the best thing ever. <laughs> and spell ever with E V A R. Mm hmm. Considering that I, I've heard the name Kuzuna Ai, but I have no idea any of this. It's, it's just kind of like, uh, you don't you don't know Kazuna Ai? No, How could you not know Kazuna Ai? No. Blasphemer. I know. <laughs> so this is the Kazuna Ai anime. Premise is that Kazuna Ai has disappeared five years ago, and there are all these girls vying to become the next great idol. Uh, I think another one showed up and has since disappeared as well. Um, so there are all these teenage girls um, in some kind of metaverse thing. It's yeah. very unclear. Um, all uh, auditioning for that. The odd thing with no, no. one of the odd one things. of the odd things. Yeah, yeah odd things not the show. singular. <laughs> um, the the primary show is in two D. Right. Um, but then when they jump into their sort of metaverse thing. Uh, their sort of VTuber world is all 3D, um, clearly in like Mika Mika Dance, you know, software. Right. Yeah. And it also like opens with a speech by Kizuna I to the audience about, welcome to my show. I, you know, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Um, so She's there's a. Not in it. <laughs> and singing and dancing, because that whole dancing. thing has her dancing and singing. So. Yeah. Um, so it's an odd vehicle for Kizuna yeah. I. Granted, Kizuna I, you know, is kind of a, it is a corporation more than anything else. Right. So it's a, it's a group. Um, so maybe this is just the, the best way for them to expand that franchise. I, I just call the best yeah. way, but yes, it is certainly a way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> seriously, well, you, you don't even discover yeah. that, that Kazuna I has been missing for five years in the story until like three quarters of the way through. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you're set in this quasi futuristic world real world before they go into the metaverse yeah. Yeah. you know you two, where the hell it is I, I don't know and and there's a whole scene the tea scene yeah yeah <laughs> that's right and, and and we go on for like what 10 minutes and we're just like and i'm like and i'm like dying and screaming inside is as if i was drinking malt liquor i was just like ready to explode because it was going nowhere. Well, no, that was the doesn't. cut cut scene while their metaverse was loading. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, see, I, I, I've seen, yeah, yeah, I, I it's exactly right. I, I, um, I've seen the Indonesia concert with Hatsune mm. Miku, mm -hmm. and I know who that character My is. Book. Like, I know who Kazuna yeah. I looks like. Yeah, <clears throat> in that right. concert. It was like an hour and some odd. It was on Crunchyroll and like one mm -hmm. of those sort of obscure parts of Crunchyroll. Yeah. So I watched it. Yeah. And there were these entire other characters that did songs oh, yeah. that I've never in my life seen okay. that are <laughs> obviously part of right. a lineup of characters. So I could entirely see that this is, is a vehicle for people who love mm -hmm. Kizuna Ai. And these are the new like parts of her troupe. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. that, that you're going to fall in love with each one, oh, and you're going to follow John, along. So you're saying this is the Transformers the movie of Kazuna Eye. <laughs> kind of, sort of. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's what it kind of feels like. It's like, here's yeah. just new people that you guys already love her. And mm -hmm. here's the new parts of the franchise that when they show up in Kazuna Eye, mm -hmm. like collab kind of things, that yep. should be like, oh my gosh, it's the girl from the mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. That if you don't yep. follow that, like me, I'm like, I don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> All you know is yeah. T is involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tea and, and tea. awkward dancing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the other part. It's like they, they had this like the yeah. the metaverse, and they had our our, our 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 main character girl doing her bit for the other presentation for, for presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she does the thing. Now we've already seen at the beginning, because in the eye doing the planetary backgrounds and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And this girl's just like, hey, I'm at Otocon and doing the dance. <laughs> you know, and, and we're just yeah. like, that's it. And then everyone, the rest of the series, oh, you were so great. I'm like, was it? According to who? <laughs> What? Yeah, but they do this weird thing, and maybe this is again this maybe this is a Kazuna Eye thing because it's y'all YouTube, it's you know that kind yeah. of platform. Like even Kazuna Eye, she's basically on a big, you know, star background with like planets <laughs> behind her and so forth. But like that's it. Like there's no stage, there's nothing else. It's just the VTuber, you know, model 
and then this background and when the the main girl goes it's her and this kind of like neon 80s like lines behind her I, you know what you reminded me of, of the opening sequence of Rama one half yes mm -hmm. yeah totally um and it's just it's just her avatar on this background kind of moving around and yeah when that's all you have without any other sort of visual context it feels yeah. very awkward yeah so, yeah <laughs> um again if you like Kazuna I I totally get getting into the right. show yeah, so yeah. you understand I totally it. appreciate yeah. that but for the outsiders it's just not for us no. in any way shape or form um another show that was not for me personally uh the legendary hero is dead <laughs> um although I can certainly see the appeal um wacky comedy um basically guy um uh I shouldn't just say guy, um, pervert guy, <laughs> yeah. Um, accidentally kills the great legendary hero, <laughs> and the only way to resolve that is by essentially putting his brain in the reincarnated body of the legendary hero. Um, well, it's not reincarnated; they just dug him back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. You're right. Yeah, he's reanimated. Just reanimated. Right? <laughs> reanimated the yeah. corpse um, of the hero. Um, more or less reanimated. Uh, yeah. As he starts to smell. Um, <laughs> he and... hit him bad hurt enough in the back of his head. <laughs> yeah. So it is. It is kind of very much the wackiness ensues of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. As then they go off onto adventures. Um, I think this is one of those anime where if you're in between like, you know, slogs of like watching one piece or, or going mm -hmm. through a particularly difficult into not intellectually, but like emotional series or whatever, or, or challenging anime that, mm -hmm. that you enjoy. This is the one where you watch, where you just want to sit back and go, <laughs> is yeah. I fell out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you exactly. know? Yeah. And then, and if you don't finish it, that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. if you never come yeah. back to it, that's fine. But take it for what it is, which is mm -hmm. a good chuckle here and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some etchy scenes, certainly. Um, <laughs> so yeah. We, we see in the first episode <laughs> that <laughs> might, I would almost say that there's some of it feels like that might be the better part of the <laughs> show. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll see. I, I I, I agree that it probably would be something I would I would just tune into periodically if I've got other stuff that I'm, I'm I don't feel like tackling mm -hmm. because it's okay so far you know yeah. it's, it's not anything that wowed me enough where I'm like yes yeah. I could totally see where this is going to develop in like such an interesting way and it's, it's just going to be such wacky fun it's like it's mildly amusing there's some mild etchy stuff yeah okay fine mm -hmm. yeah totally um. Stop Stop as as, come on, folks. Don't you want to see the sexual image of having a stocking put onto a radish? Yeah, that's true. And yes, that's it's what happens in the first Something yeah. I had not envisioned. Heavily uh, featured. Certainly. Yeah. Yes. Heavily featured. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because the uh, Japanese radish concern has been uh, <laughs> a, a big sponsor of mm -hmm. the show. Yeah. Um, let's move on, shall we, to The Marginal Service. This show, I thought it had me. I, I did, yeah. Years. Like, I really liked where this show seemed to be going, um, and then it lost it, me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden... <laughs> all yeah. of, it, it wasn't just a hard turn to the left. It was a hard turn to the left. Someone slapped the, slammed the door in your face, opened the door, put your head in it, and smacked it in there a few times, and then let you stumble <laughs> around in a darkened room until you finally fall down the stairwell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of a turn that you're going to take about Pretty much. much. 75 uh, third, three quarters of the way in. Oh, because... Uh, yeah. Yeah, because like you, I was just like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we're dealing with vampires. We're dealing with this. It's kind of mm -hmm. Section Nine ish from Ghost mm -hmm. in the Shell, yep. and just some, you know. I mean, it presents also sort of Chainsaw Man ish that you know. Yeah, 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 very much so. You know, that and, weird and, paranormal investigation thing. Yeah, yeah. and and so you know, it moves to this point, and then you get to that point, and it's just like, uh, uh, it it pegs the goofy uh, meter. It really does. Yes, it does. I, I was just like, I was, I was just like, no, no, no. We we accidentally put in another anime into this. Um, <laughs> no, what happened here? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at the construction equipment, the construction hats, and the mm -hmm. dippy little uniforms, and I'm like, mm -hmm. going, 
we were yeah. just fa fighting vampires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take Ghost in the Shell, but put all of Section 9 in Power Rangers uniforms. And not yeah. good Power Rangers. Not good <laughs> Power Rangers, yeah. <laughs> the yellow construction hats with a big yeah. green cross on the front of it. Like, yeah. Huh? It's it's bizarre. Um, yeah. So, in, so to be clear, like it starts off very much, you know, cop investigating, you know, dirty drug deals. People get shot. You know, bad things happen. Um, he he they, they, he has to surrender his badge because, of course, you know, um, and then he gets recruited by Monster Hunting Service, right? Yeah. Um, classic kind of thing. But then <laughs> you reveal the uniforms and. And then just like how they fight monsters too, with just you know, nail uh, guns. Yeah, special nail guns. Magical yeah. nail guns. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just I don't know it. And, and how he how we transfer from that, like yeah, his part, his new partner, mm -hmm. like informs him and goes, okay, guns are not going to really do anything yeah. to these guys, so we're going right. to have to figure out another way. And they encounter one of them, mm -hmm. and the dude just looks over right. and goes. It just picks up an iron right. like, pipe with mm -hmm. you know the you know yeah. giant, at the end of it, and he's just beating the hell out of the guy out of the mm -hmm. out of yeah. the, out of yeah. the vampire Blood thing, going whatever. everywhere. And, and, yeah, it just mm -hmm. and all, and then you realize that all he's doing is just hastening the guy to get into the actual real form of what right. he's mm -hmm. supposed to be. Yeah, and it's just kind of like. And you're like, wow, this is gritty. It's dark. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I can't wait to see what happens. To oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just really weird. It, the original TV series, like, not based on anything. Right. Um, yeah. We're just going in this direction, and it's just the way. I mean, it's not even like love after world domination. There's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of like goofy Power Ranger kind of stuff. Of course, they're yeah. Just, yeah. They're, 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 Joking yeah. on, it's 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 great mm -hmm. fun. It's funny as hell. Mm -hmm. But this is like they're serious. Yeah, this is yeah. not a they joke. They show up mm -hmm. to do the thing, and you're like, mm -hmm. you're oh, this is <laughs> this is not funny. This yeah. is not, nobody, <laughs> we're not laughing. Nope. At the, nobody's laughing nope. at this. Yeah. Okay. And, and like but, we were saying, what? you know, if if you're a Japanese teenager who grew up on Super Sentai for the past fifty years, right of of stuff, this probably doesn't look as goofy to you as it does to us. Yeah. Um. And it probably works, and it's totally fine. But for us, <laughs> not so much. But yeah. but to Brent's point, you you get into the episode, and the, like the majority of the episode, you you become vested. It's it's interesting, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's just like okay, you know, we've kind of seen this anime before, but we do like what we've seen before. Yeah. So this is kind of working, and then the thing happens, and you're just like, yeah. oh, okay. yeah. yeah, why, why, <laughs> yeah. Um, I cannot take them seriously anymore. Sorry. No. This doesn't happen. Um, another anime that you can't take seriously, but you're not supposed to, is Mashla, Magic and Muscles. Yes. Um, main yes. character grows up in a magical world. Everyone, it's it's Harry Potter. It is. It is. Harry no, it is. It Harry is Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Um, literally. You know, literally. Yeah, butterbeer and magical newspapers and all. Uh, it's all there. And yeah. Hogwarts. And, and, the whole and, 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 the, and they yeah. take the scar to the to the end yeah. degree. Yeah, everyone gets a scar, and, a scar, and that's their magical power. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very much that. But um, main character was born without powers, and so his grandfather has been keeping him away in a remote cabin, um, for uh for for years and years. No one must know what he is. And so instead, he has been training his muscles, right? And so then, uh, of course, bad guys show up to to uncover them and and you know stop them and and find the the perverse person who doesn't have powers, and a confrontation ensues. Um, I shouldn't talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk about this one because yeah. it's it's like on the one it, hand you're you're not, there are moments where you're not sure mm. if you should take this seriously or not mm -hmm. right right because True. there are moments where you're just like oh like when the mm -hmm. when the father is describing how he yeah. was willing to end his life because he felt useless and he found the, the son mm -hmm. yeah. the baby and he's just like i have purpose in my life and then there's a really kind of scene where he's just like he's just like damn it 
I'm going to die, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm going to save mm -hmm. my son. And you're just yeah. like, oh, you go, you, you, you go. You go, but then, energy. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then, and then the, there's the rest of it. Double door. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just like, and, and the guy, the, our main character is dumber than dirt. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the dude is just, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, like, you can't. Well, he does. He has that he, whole mob psycho kind of like, uh, kind of uh, look where you're like, yeah. um, okay. And he can't open a door. <laughs> Yeah, he, he literally, literally can't remember. open the door. He, yeah. he or even he, close the damn door. Because <laughs> he can't figure out. Push or pull. Push or pull. Mm -hmm. So he just yeah. takes the damn thing off the hinges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anyway. So, you know, so and the rest of this is just like, oh, do you like bleach? Here's some bleach references. <laughs> oh, you must really be a, Holly, uh, a, a, a Harry Potter fan. Here's mm -hmm. this whole we ripping Harry, Harry Potter, Potter here. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. and when I'm saying they're ripping it, I we're not. Joking. Yeah. Oh, it is, yeah. It is. yeah. You get Hogwarts at the end, folks, yep. and you get you get Bleach, you get uh, One Punch Man, I think, in there yeah. with with the character. Oh Mom yeah, Psycho. Yeah, okay. You've got um, God, you name yeah. it. It's just like how what else can we rip off and throw in here to grab mm -hmm. as many people to watch yeah. this dullard <laughs> go yeah. through life. I mean, uh, yeah. It, the humor is very um unsubtle yeah <laughs> yeah you know and so if you you know again sometimes you're you're in for that um, yeah 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 but sometimes it works really yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm not quite sure where i would fit this in if i if i was involved in other shows i'm mm -hmm. not entirely sure i would yeah you know what i mean because yeah. it's just kind of like ah, there isn't i like the idea of non-magic people you know, winning out in the end by their pluck and power of friendship. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. But I just don't know that this is the vehicle for that, for like yeah. everyone no. to see that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, and the animation is yeah. not bad. It's, you know, I mean, yeah. there's not, there's anything that's, that's visually like cheap shortcuts kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just the characters yeah. themselves don't engender mm -hmm. any sort of, at least even this episode is, one doesn't engender any kind of. Interest. This is definitely made for Shonen fans. Yeah. yeah, right. That, that's that's going to be your demographic. If you're out, you're out. It's not right. Um, no transition here. My clueless first friend um, <laughs> oh, has nice. nothing whatsoever to do with Matchla. This has no yeah. connection. <laughs> um, uh, you have a girl who's sort of Sawako, Sawato from from The Ring. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, quiet, shy girl who the other kids in in their class. Um, basically bully for being you know, the grim reaper being very you know um quiet and and morose spooky spooky exactly and then a young boy transfer student comes in and decides she's the coolest thing ever yeah yeah and it's just the sweetest little thing it is just it is it is it just warms your heart that it, that is its goal because he's just so wonderfully stupid that it's just, <laughs> and I don't mean that Plucky in a little bad moron, guy, but he's right? yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. he's just, and he's, he's just so nice on the border of just like, oh, you have to die now because you just can't possibly <laughs> get any better. Yeah. But, uh, but so the girl is, you know, she looks like Kataro. Um, yeah. and you know, so, you know, of course she gets bullied and all that and she seems to accept it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And she even warns the kid, the new friend off and she's yeah, just she's, like, no, you don't, you don't. She's very clear headed about all this. Totally. And yeah. yeah. And, and he's just not getting it because he's, because <laughs> he can only focus on one thing. You're so cool. You're the Grim Reaper. You got this. Everyone's going barrier, barrier, barrier against you. You got a lot of power. Well, if you stay, you know they'll think you're you'll you'll get be cursed by me. Really? And he holds her freaking hand, and we're all three of us yep. just freaking melting in our seats. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 the perfect time period where they talk about Chunibyo syndrome is like seventh eighth grade. They're younger than that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, the, yeah. with the red bags, it looks like an elementary school kind of thing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Course, and it's so. like you can entirely envision this kid is looking for the fantastical. 
Mm-hmm. And yes. he's just totally sold on the idea that it's like, yes, in this world, you have people that have these crazy powers <laughs> and he wants them to. He's mm-hmm. tried making barriers, but he's not powerful enough. Like, <laughs> she has the power to curse people. Mm-hmm. How freaking amazing is that? And I'm like, ah, oh, I remember being young when I thought mm-hmm. wild things too. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> you know, when the world was magical and filled with wonder. Yeah, maybe we can move somewhere where Power Rangers actually exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Where you're, yeah. When you're a kid. Um, Every time you open a door to see if the Ever After is on the other side. Huh? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Narnia? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh. Speaking of, uh, uh, let's talk about my home hero, which is. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> um, wow. I'm going to have to spoil this. Um, although it is kind of in the Wikipedia article and such. Um, main character is a sort of average, soft spoken salaryman type character. Um, very quiet. Uh, he has a mostly grown teen daughter, I think she's like 18, 19, something yes. like that. Um, and uh, well, I mean, the, the episode starts with him uh, uh, seeing that she has bruises on her face. It's like, we know where this is going. Um, He ends up confronting her boyfriend and um, boyfriend dies. Um, So the story ends up being kind of how he is going to use. And the the boyfriend is involved with the Yakuza. And so, you know, um, it it doesn't just end there. So it it is clearly like this very dark um, sort of reverse police procedural if you will yeah of like how do we hide the body how do we hide this how do we get away from those people how do we sort of navigate all these things yeah um and i say we um his uh the guy's wife also finds out about it so they have to do it together um definitely aimed at an older audience yeah Yeah. Yeah. The idea of domestic violence is probably a little much for the young set to have to really yeah. deal with. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. So trigger warnings, you know, you have that. Although we never, we never see it. We never see domestic violence, but it is very much right. a thing. Right. It is um, stated. It is stated. Yeah, it is. It is very much stated. It is talked about. Um, murder happens on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with uh, the best murder weapon yeah. ever. <laughs> best murder weapon I've seen in a long time. Um, yeah. So yeah, trigger warnings galore here. Yes. It is, um, this is for an adult. Uh, this mm. is, um, again, this is not magical or anything like that. Um, you kind of don't pity the guy in the beginning of the show. He's mm-hmm. just Joe Schmo going through the world. He has Casper a hobby. Yeah, he has a hobby of amateur detective fish fiction mm-hmm. which is the whole premise of why yeah. by the end of the episode he's like figuring out what to do yeah um but it's it's definitely <clears throat> like the whole you can already see that they're not going to use shovels to dig this hole they're, they got in a freaking machine to dig mm-hmm. this hole that they're putting themselves into <laughs> and and yeah. you know and uh-huh. it's and it's even the characters, but I really love the character design of this guy, and mm-hmm. because it just screams milk toast, yeah. and and it's like Chainsaw Man, which I really like. Mm-hmm. I fully acknowledge that this has a very narrow subset of people who are yeah. going to watch this. Um, so if you're looking for shonen, nah. If you're looking for, you know, to, you know. Even a crime drama? No, this is mm. this is this is this is Breaking Bad. Actually, this is this yes, is, yeah, you know, yes, yeah, and, yep. And and that's mm-hmm. that's basically what this is. Only the yep. guy is is, and the only redeeming premise of this whole freaking thing is the mm-hmm. fact that he's trying to protect his daughter. Yeah, yeah. And in doing so, he has pretty much not <laughs> done that. Yeah, <laughs> he's endangered. Everybody in the family, but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, this is one of those where it's it's good. I respect the I respect where it's going. I respect the 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 way that they're trying to like craft this and how this is going to be this interesting 
weaving through this labyrinth to try and figure the way out. And it is way the hell and too, too intense for me. <laughs> you know I mean? Like this is going to require yeah. a, a, a deep kind of uh, yeah. a deep dive to inhabit yeah. this world and to see where it plays out. And it's like, yeah. dude, that's just, that's a lot to cope with. So yeah. it's like, uh, you know, for people who are, are, a little less inclined to get deep and dirty. This is yeah. going to be a hard one to get to. Yeah. Um, yeah. It reminds me a lot of like Naoki Arasawa's work. So like monster, mm. right. You know, yeah. the, the very psychological yeah. adult driven, you know, yeah. Um, the, by adults for adults. The, the whole time we were watching it, I was like going, what if Satoshi Kone had, had, yes. had a hold of on this? That's a great point. Yeah. 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 That is very much the, the tone. But I think Breaking Bad is, you Perfect. Know, yeah. yeah, you you nailed it yeah. there. Um, another hard left, everyone. Um, we're <laughs> alphabetical, and just saying how it uh, often works. Yeah, hang on um, your hat. <laughs> my love starting with Yamato Kun at level nine nine nine. Um, <laughs> one of the. I mean, if this this I don't know. Um, I thoroughly. I was actually really impressed with this one. I didn't just appreciate it. Didn't just like it. Like. The um, it's a rom com, you know, um, girl meets guy online, um, after being dumped by her boyfriend, also playing this online in the same game. Um, and so she kind of rebounds with the new guy. Um, the way they handle kind of her emotional state and kind of how, how fragile she is right now, and not that she's you know completely falling apart, but it, it definitely you know, it hurts. Um, yeah. With kind of the comedy of some of her choices and how she does things and the, the very um lighthearted goofy elements of that of somebody kind of ah, you know yeah. um when that happens i think it's, it's just very deftly handled in this in this, this anime series um <clears throat> lovely use of um of both um very emotional visuals and very comedic visuals is going to really work in, in both ways. Um, and it just, it, it felt like they were hitting the emotions, right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. It felt believable in a lot of the way that she was doing things and the, the way mm -hmm. certain things broke over her mm -hmm. at, at various points in time. And, and you had pointed out, we were watching it about, you know, like and same thing about, you know, the comedic and the serious that you get some of that goofy animation style where yeah. it's kind of like the right, right. kind of look mm -hmm. and it goes kind of, kind of silly. And then yeah. you get like one moment where she's about to cry and it's yeah. just, it's this beautiful mm. study of her face. Yeah. The tears are welling up. You see, you know, her eyes are starting to sort of, wobble slightly as the, mm -hmm. as the tears are coming and the hair is just draped in a certain mm -hmm. way and it's like it's done really really well yeah and it's like it's gorgeous. there's a lot of loving care done to it and it's like you know uh, again this we've had this season at least a couple of these shows where there's some really delicately done presentation and story mm -hmm. style yeah that's like wow thank you <laughs> you know, those, those yeah. are kind of nice. It's it's fun mm -hmm. to see people getting punched and shot and all that, but still, <laughs> it's also nice to have something that you can engage with like this. Mm -hmm. Be amused, be touched, be be right. be into what they're what they're showing you in a way mm -hmm. that makes it meaningful. And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, this, yeah, this is one of those where I'm like, I I yeah. want to keep watching this. I want to yeah. see how this keeps going. This, you know, it it it's it's a it's a great little story. <laughs> it's it's definitely a slice of life that's a break from gut punches and being shot in the face. <laughs> yeah. And and uh but you know it's like there was one scene that we all laughed at where you know she's angry she's just been dumped and you know she's she goes onto the game and and she goes to her favorite little spot and she starts murdering things. You know, just like, <laughs> and, and you know, just like like you know, like us I guess like, I'm kinda of mad about that. I, I, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I love that shot where they show the reaction of all the little slimes just like cowering in fear. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, she's pissed. Oh god. But it is but I think what what is nice about it is it, or the new newness of this is, is mm. the fact that they bring in a character who only joined the game because her boyfriend at the time was doing it. Yeah. And so at first, you know, you, you get a character that you feel like, Oh, she's only doing it for this. 
but she's still playing the game. She knows the mm-hmm. things and she knows right. there's the, the events and da, 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 and that's how she meets Yamada. Uh, Yamada couldn't there and as, as a character online. And we all know that these things happen. You know, like if you play Genshin, you get requests, yep. you know, and things like that. So this this is not, you know, back in the day when we would have talked about falling in love in the, in the chat line. That's just like, yeah. something, boy, what the hell's wrong with you? you know? <laughs> Today, it's not such a big deal. You know, yeah, that absolutely. happens, you know. There's actually and, a really good, really good point about how, like, in this, the video game is just treated as a way people meet. Right. Yes. Like, it's, yeah, it's very normalized. Right. Yeah, and you know, so she goes to the event, and it's a normal story. It's a normal breakup and getting yeah. and reconnecting kind of story. But you know, again, it's just done very, very well. You get your laugh where you're supposed to laugh. You get your all moment, and and you know, and then there are moments where you're just like going, "This is for me because I play X," you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then, unlike the I, uh, uh, you know, the the virtual idol that we had earlier. Yeah. Where we're just like, I don't get our stand. This yeah. one, we're just like, oh yes, this means that and the other thing. So clearly, <laughs> yeah. clearly, yeah, exactly. we're the demographic, you know. Mm-hmm. Totally. But yeah. And it was um, a nice little twist at the end that will give us an episode two. It'll be something interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep, I, I appreciated that. Also, the fact I am not sure is the guy in high school. I think we see like a shot in the opening credit sequence of him like with a school uniform on in school. Um, I well, I know in the in the promo he has a blazer and a school bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, not entirely sure. I mean, we yeah. know that he is a pro gamer, mm-hmm. but that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you're right pro gaming twenty four seven. You could certainly attend school. So yeah. no idea because she's explicitly in college. Yeah. Um, it's, it's yeah. just nice seeing a a rom com with. Slightly older, yeah. Protagonist. I mean, she's drinking we'll beer, which means she's over twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, and boy, was she drinking! <laughs> wow, Lady that's a good point. Liquor, and he was only getting like sodas, so he must yes. be below drinking age. Yep, mm-hmm. there we go. Which uh, I, you know, that'd be interesting to see the development. Yeah. Is he, you know, I'm a pro gamer, and this is my last, you know, yeah, little bit of school before I graduate. So yeah. I'm I'm eighteen. Mm-hmm. Like okay, yeah, okay, so mm-hmm. you know. Certainly looks like I'm it. I'm almost out of middle school. I'll be 15 <laughs> next month. Uh, okay, this is getting a little weird. <laughs> um, all right, moving on to my one hit kill sister, which John has seen and we have not. <sighs> <laughs> Ringing endorsement. Um, it's uh, an older sister obsessed with a younger brother, and not just obsessed like I must protect you, mm. but like I must hug you to my bosom i must mm. touch you and and be around you and i want to smell your laundry and oh, oh, um yeah. he gets isekai he is stoked about being isekai i do for the love of me i can't remember how he ended up getting isekai mm. it was that important <laughs> 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 you know what i mean and, and honestly i think the way that it actually from what I can sort of remember the the, mm-hmm. the start of it, it wasn't that important. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, they got were like, okay, Isakai, and now we start the game. I'm like, okay, here we go. Um, he gets Isakai. He, he's stoked about being in this new world. He's gonna like adventure up, and he's gonna be so strong. And he gets his ass handed to him, mm. like fully to the point that he, of course, naturally unlocks a crazy skill, which mm. summons his older sister. Gotcha. And she's OP. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Powerful as God OP kind of thing. Okay. And so now, you know, I'm in this adventure land. I'm doing all these things. And sort of it, that kind of background is like, and I'm away from my sister. Uh, okay. And then it's like, yeah. now she shows up and he's like, ah, mm-hmm. crap. <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, it's, you know, we go, we do things, and I, I, she saves your bacon, and that allows you mm-hmm. to like get more experience points because she's with you. So you get let little, you get to drain off of the things that she's doing. Mm-hmm. So it is just dumb, it, and I don't, <laughs> and I don't mean that as an, I don't mean that yeah. as an insult, but it yeah. is not a plot line that is going mm-hmm. to deliver something where it's like oh, I never saw that. The only mm-hmm. possibility would be 
and you know we're not actually brother and sister <laughs> <laughs> you know you were Waiting. adopted or something yeah. like that you know what I mean? it's like that would be the only thing surprising on this and it's just yeah. like okay we've seen the sibling obsession thing it's mm -hmm. it's creepy in this context it's still creepy but it's just stupid humor mm -hmm. um it's very easy to just sort of let this wash over you and be like yeah that's good you know that's fine ha 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 look he can't even like fight a slime and she just killed like a mountain dragon mm -hmm. like ah, ha, ha, ha. Yep. so if you've got the time mm -hmm. it's, that'd be, it'd be great to just kill some time with yeah okay if you're looking for a serious show that, that tackles it you know any kind of issues <laughs> at all <laughs> this is not your show yeah <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So what was the uh, the one from several seasons ago? My mom and her two two hit yeah. attack. Mm -hmm. yeah, Imagine that. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's as opposed to um, the mother being just like, "Oh, I love you, honey," and hugging him a lot. Mm -hmm. um, convert that where she's just like obsessed with being in contact with him in a mm -hmm. creepier kind of way. But that mm -hmm. same kind of thing where he's like, "I'm doing the adventure thing," and it's like, and mm -hmm. here she is, super op. Yeah, and, and sort of stealing his thunder, but that. They get they build the relationship back to appreciate each other. I imagine that's yeah. where this is going to go. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, yeah. fine enough. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <laughs> another show that probably will not, you know, completely change your life, but we did both like a little bit more. The three of us like a little bit more. Taco Elf. Yeah, that's well. like, totally yeah. the wrong. There is a Taco Elf. Um, um, you have a shrine. It's God is an elf, um, but she's a shut-in. All she does is play video games and watch anime. Um, and the Miko assigned to her and her shrine is a uptight 15-year-old girl um, who just wants the, 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 the God to be a normal God and not you know, be a shut-in who watches anime and plays video games all day. That's your show. Um, yep. <laughs> that said, uh, it has a budget. It is very prettily done. They do a very nice job with the character designs and, and staying on model and all that stuff. Um, and it does have a bit of a heart to it. I yeah. Say. Well, I think that the, the indications for elf longevity mm -hmm. and the fact that, as you know, we pointed out while we were watching it, nobody's freaked out by this fact. Yeah. yeah. True. So yeah. obviously this is a world where it's like the idea of a god Living yeah. in a sh being physically present in a shrine mm -hmm. is not like okay, the entire world is standing outside the gate going, <laughs> There's a what? god in there, so it's like obviously this is a thing in yeah. this world, so it's not, it's not that's not going to break any ground there. But mm -hmm. can't wait to see the intro uh pieces to the show itself show other characters and other things yeah. going on. And it's like, so yeah. there's going to be some interesting world building developments about why is this normal. Mm -hmm. how did this how did this god get here you know we have a little slice of how the god got here we don't have the whole picture so it's like i i enjoyed it visually enough mm -hmm. i enjoyed the the sweetness of the story in and of itself that i think it's one of those where it's like i'm not going to hopefully i will end up crying in the end but i have a feeling that there is some good potential there for mm -hmm. how the summoning mm -hmm. of the of the god occurred and the people in her life that has led her to be the way that she is, and I think yeah. there's a good potential for some for some heartstring tugging. Yeah, you know, it's like it seems to kind of telegraph that a little bit about, you know, the idea as people get older mm -hmm. and their knees don't work as good, <clears throat> and how short life is for humans, and it's like, okay, mm -hmm. this will be interesting to see. Okay, yeah, yeah. As, and as I was singing during the episode, who wants to live? Forever. No, sorry, this is not Natalie Liner. No one's head's <laughs> being lopped off. Um, <laughs> not yet. It, not yet. Um, but it, 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 you know, it's. I enjoyed the episode. I thought it was, mm -hmm. you know, the the Otaku parts were 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 funny to me. And we mm -hmm. actually, what you, we froze the screen at one point just to identify things. Yeah. And um, you know, so it it was it was amusing to me. It was heartwarming and that kind of thing. And I liked how they present through discussion, the concept of age to mm -hmm. humans versus this yeah. God and, you know, yeah. what it must be like for, you know, both of them, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, if it goes somewhere great, 
probably not going to be on this ride. Not because there was anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. It just seemed like a really intensely slow burn. Yeah, I felt like, you know, so. yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I felt like this could have been like a three, two, two episode at OVA mm-hmm. be done. You yeah. Know, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm, I, if, if it does well, great. Um, mm-hmm. night fun first episode. I would tell you to watch it if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I'm just kind of like, eh, yeah, it's, it's good. It was fun. Yeah. And, um, possibly sponsored by Red Bull, but it's not clear. Not yeah. clear. Not exactly clear. Yes. <laughs> You'll see what we mean when you, when you see it. Um, moving on to Skip and Loafer, which John has seen and we have not. Yes. Yes. And I, it's, you know, I'm a sucker for a slice of life kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, rom com kind of stuff. Um, you get in this, you know, image card here, you have a girl on the left who is a small town country girl and somewhere Kansai accent because that kind of okay. comes up when she like makes some kind of comments or like, what are y'all talking about? Like, where would that accent come from? Mm-hmm. She wants to get out of the small town. She, you know, she, she's got bigger plans in her life. She, she wants to be a government official. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she wants to go to high school in Tokyo because that's going to, you know, that's going to put her on her path. Mm -hmm. So she goes to stay with her aunt and she attends the Tokyo high school. And you get to meet blonde guy, protagonist Kun versus Mm -hmm. protagonist John, um, who is the nicest, sweetest guy in the class mm-hmm. all the girls mm-hmm. love him all the guys love want to be, be him no want to be with him no one <laughs> um everybody he's everybody's buddy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's this first episode is sort of her dealing with dialing in from a small town small mm-hmm. classroom small school to a big ass tokyo high school mm-hmm. and yeah. she has no friends she knows nobody and he's this nice dude who's apparently nice to everybody but is really nice to her Mm -hmm. and she's kind of like wary of it she's not Mm -hmm. sort of over the moon like all the other Mm -hmm. girls but she's kind of wary of it and that is one of those like pivot moments where he Uh... like starts to kind of notice her more Mm -hmm. because she's not crawling him all the time like what are you doing where you go what's Mm -hmm. up what's happening um you see some of the girls in the class notice that he's interacting Mm -hmm. with her on a more sort of an equal basis Mm-hmm. And that draws attention to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, some interesting advice from someone who is ostensibly friendly with her, but not a friend, yeah. mm-hmm. which is then sort of countered by another girl so that mm-hmm. you're, you're understanding there's a dynamic going on mm-hmm. that you don't know, you know, oh, he's just nice to everybody. Is that to put you off? Mm-hmm. In case you like him, or is it you know what I mean? The other person yeah. saying, "Well, she's just yeah. telling you that because she likes," and it's like, "Oh, okay. these yeah, are yeah, interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm. interesting dynamics that you don't have an, a feeling that in her small town she yeah. had to deal with." Mm-hmm. So these are yeah. all these kind of interpersonal. Um, it's not revealing anything terrible. But there's she gets invited to go to do karaoke for the first time. Okay, mm. and. You know, part of her of her journey is always talking with her best friend back at home. Okay. So at, you know, kind of key points, she'll talk about how it is to have all these people in her class. Mm. She gets uncomfortable at karaoke because there's all these unfamiliar people and she doesn't mm. know what the relations are. So she calls her best friend. You know what I mean? It's like, so she mm. touches, grounds herself. Yeah. She grounds herself back with mm. this friend who is in contact with her family. They trade vegetables in town. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. this kind of <laughs> wow. very earthy experience. Mm-hmm. And she keeps grounding herself to sort of check where she's at. Interesting. And it's, so yeah. it's, it's this nice, it's slow. It's mm-hmm. a slow development, but it is a, it, I feel it's a really beautiful character development because mm. you can see from the cover art. Yeah. She is not done in like super high death mm. she right. is purposely done in a very simplistic kind of style that mm. is very highlighty of you're a country girl uh, and yeah. his character design is a little more detailed a little more you know discreet. classical pretty boy yeah pretty boy tokyo guy <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah. it's like you know you've got a lot of these things that they've done to sort of key this in um that I really 
I'm on board for this because I mm-hmm. really want to see how the dynamics work out. I really want to see what's what's his game. And at the end of episode mm-hmm. one, you get this little kernel. Mm. And it's like, it gives you, you know, there are there have been plenty enough shows where you just have the one always nice guy, and he's always mm-hmm. nice because he's just nice. Mm-hmm. And the girl's yeah. the jaded one, and she kind of comes around. Uh, mm-hmm. Fine, we've seen that a lot of times. And there are ones where the guy's quiet, mm-hmm. or he's moody, and he's brooding, mm-hmm. and the girl sort of like draws out of him what yeah. is making him moody and, and the way he is, and there's love ensues. Mm-hmm. This, that little hint drop, that little kernel they give you at the mm-hmm. end of the first episode, it's like, what's going on with him? Interesting. There's yeah. something that he's not, okay, there's, okay. Mm-hmm. There's some depth going on with him yeah. and why he is the way he is. It's like, okay, you got me. You got yeah. me. I'm good. Cool. Okay. I'm good. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Um, this reminds me a lot of his and her circumstances. Yeah. Where the uh the main guy is very popular, very nice, very upbeat. And then you find out there's some um backstory to kind of where he comes from that that colors why he's behaving the way he is. It doesn't make him a villain. Right. But it just it just adds complexity to yeah. the reasons why he's doing things. Yeah. Well, think about it, was it uh, uh, Blue Spring Ride from several mm. seasons ago, mm-hmm. where uh, two middle school kids, a uh, girl and a boy, and they are kind of ostensibly happy, fun kids. Mm-hmm. Um, he moves away, then comes back when they're in high school. Ah. And he's gone from being this outgoing, like really kind of positive kind of guy mm. to having a different last name. Mm. and being very introverted and very kind of moody and dark. Interesting. And she remembers the boy that he was, Mm -hmm. and that trips off in her that investigation of what happened to you. Mm -hmm. And that peeling away the layers of the onion to discover what happened in the time that we've been separated. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's where I I get that kind of vibe from this, where Mm -hmm. it's like, she doesn't know him from, from a bar of soap. Mm-hmm. But she sees this really friendly, really nice guy, mm-hmm. and it's like there's enough of these dynamics in her class mm-hmm. about things that I, I'm pretty sure that what the hint is at the <clears throat> end of episode mm-hmm. one, yeah, that, a that is, well, that there's going to be <laughs> that same kind of thing is going to pass around that network. Mm-hmm. She's going to catch a piece of that. And mm-hmm. she's gonna look after it, be like, "Well, I don't understand why he is like." You know what I mean? So it's like, "Okay, mm-hmm. there we go. This will, cool. this will be the interesting delve into what's going on." So, cool, sounds good. Speaking of delving, um, the last show of the shows that we watched um, is a show about a character who is very investigative. She's doing some really, really serious study of the cats of Earth in Too Cute Crisis. <laughs> Um, so the main character is a member of an alien expeditionary force who is considering just wiping out Earth, but yeah. you know, you got to check beforehand, you just got to see. And so she, she goes down and discovers that Earth has these incredibly cute creatures called cats. And uh, we just can't wipe out Earth because of how cute cats are. Um, and she discovers dogs and other, other cute animals. And it's basically her kind of um um i was going to say some some very dirty things but i'm not going to (laughs) um uh just losing her mind (laughs) at how cute all of these cats are it it's i mean that that's basically episode yeah oh that's that's, that's basically it it's it's a bubblegum show and it's wonderful for that yeah, it's it's you know it, you, d- nothing serious. This is just how how it is. She comes off, you know, as the evasion fleas coming out. She goes, "Oh, just release the toxic cloud and just kill, wipe out all the life on Earth." And they're just like, "Don't you want to know, like, if they they have anything worthwhile to the Empire?" <laughs> Fine, I'll go down. She goes down and she discovers the cats, and it's just like, "Come you know, <laughs> and, and she just goes nuts over these animals. Yeah, and somebody who was so like set on casual genocide. Right? Yeah. Who's like mental for a cat? It's like, yeah. 
wow, what the hell happened to you psychologically? <laughs> yeah. Because keep in mind, this person in the premise of the story has already wiped out entire yeah. planets. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, right. And so Didn't she's... Did she say it was like 66 trillion species or something? She's or something wow. like that. Like, what? Just like, <laughs> and, and so she's just like, oh my God. And, and she's trying to figure out how she can still be tough and then report mm -hmm. back to the mothership. Oh, just hold off on the toxic cloud and the nukes and the and, and everything. I, I still have some investigation to do. And meanwhile, she's just like going to the same cat ca the cat cafe and just be like, <laughs> oh my god, I love this cat. <laughs> and it's just it's adorable. It's just, just silly. And it put its but, paw but, on my leg and then removed it. Now I feel yeah. hollow inside. inside. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and and then and but there was a seed, there's a seed in this. And if you're a pet owner. And you're just like, yes, this is how it should be done. When they find an ab abandoned, malnourished cat. Yeah. And, it, and she helps the cat. And then she goes, who did this? <laughs> and it's a freaking art. In the background, you see this zot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like animal oh, abuse will God. not be tolerated. Be tolerated. Exactly. <laughs> um, to give you an idea of the overall tone of this show, the vice captain of the ship is named Amato Roy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. Um it's it's just it's it's adorable. It's it's, it's it's great, a lot of fun. Uh and you know, comedy on it, you know, full disclosure, like that sort of comedy is hard to do really well. Yes. Um, you know, and giving giving the timing and, and all of that that element and to make it not feel repetitive over the course of twenty four minutes. Yep. Like that's that's a pretty impressive work, yeah. Which how repetitive or not repetitive will it be over the course of twenty four episodes? Or 12, <laughs> I mean twelve. Um, I'm assuming. Yeah, I do not know. Um, I don't know how they. Yeah, fifty episodes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that that'd be a little much, unless it's about you know now the the obscure t shirt producing planet of Earth provides cats to like the alien species go. of the yeah. of the galaxy. Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, it does sound like other members of the the survey team do eventually join her on Earth. Yeah, and I can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, Everybody just like defects. Just <laughs> yeah, leave the ship parked out in space and be like, ah, nuts to this. Let's go to the yeah. cat cafe. Sweet. <laughs> so I know there were other anime of the season that we did not get to. Unfortunately, that is just kind of the nature of it. So uh, we may have more information as we watch some of the other anime out there. But I believe that was everything that How we, much did yeah. we miss. We didn't miss that much. Um, mm -hmm. We missed um, uh, Opus Ocean. Colors, Oshinoko, um, Stella of the Theater, World Die Star. Um, why were Eliana end up at the Duke's mansion and Yuri is my job? That's um, not bad. Well, That's yeah. not bad. <laughs> um, was, was, there, was there another one up here somewhere? Um, yeah, I think that, that was all the ones I'm aware of that we yeah. may have not gotten to. Not so. too shabby. Not too yeah, shabby. Yeah. Yeah, we, not complaining. We, not, done, not saying we did a bad well job. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Those are our thoughts on the spring anime. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, bye. Watch more anime. Watch, <laughs> watch more anime. More anime. <laughs> Keep watching the skies. They're out for, there. Yes. And they're coming for our cats. Yeah, exactly. Defend Protect your cats. <laughs> Box cutters. <laughs> Defend uh, them with an orbital artillery piece. Yeah, <laughs>